Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to our Eden Valley Cooking School live on Zoom. Our, our current lifestyle guests are with us. We're so glad that you're here. And you know, one of the most important things on your journey to health is your nutrition. So you can do everything right, but if you don't eat right, oh, you're kind of wasting your time. Not that those things aren't good, but nutrition is a huge part of your healing journey. And so our cooking school, we're going to focus on what you call a therapeutic diet. A therapeutic diet is one that is optimal for lifestyle diseases such as diabetes, cancer, heart disease, uh, and even things like MS and Lyme, those kinds of things. So um, basically what we do is we eat food in its whole a form as possible, and we use very little to no oil, and we avoid mainly the white foods. Now, the white foods are like white bread, white pasta, white rice. And those kinds of things, they're very high in glycemic index, which means they're high, they're very high carb um, that turns into sugar in your body. And then also they take out all the fiber and a lot of nutrients. And so they're, they're very nutritionally poor foods, those kinds of foods. And so you'll notice if you've been a lifestyle guest here that we, we give you a lot of foods in the whole forms. A lot of beans. We're going to talk about that later. And as we go through the school, I'm going to share with you some nutritional information. We don't have time for a lot of information, but just enough so that you can see the value of the foods that we promote here. So the first thing, did you get out your recipes? Yeah? Okay. So the first recipe we're going to do, so oh, this, this lifestyle of, or this cooking school is... Uh, the theme of it is spring. So how many of you have noticed our gardens? We have beautiful organic gardens. And this time of the year, this, all of this food is from our garden. And so we're, we already have tomatoes, kale, uh, collards. We have butterhead lettuce. We have carrots. We have so much good food coming up right now. You came at the just right time that you're enjoying all of this. So um, the theme for this cooking school is spring. So we're going to have lemon rice with asparagus, which is a spring vegetable. And we're going to have uh, curried chickpeas or garbanzos with spring peas. And then we're going to have lettuce wrap with our butterhead lettuce. Butterhead lettuce is my favorite lettuce. It is so delicious, so tender. It's like buttery. So that's what we're going to enjoy today. And after our cooking school, you'll be eating here and enjoying the food. I wish those of you who are joining us on, on YouTube that you could be here to eat with us, uh, but you'll have to make a trip. Okay, so the when you cook rice, now we always use brown rice. And uh, that's because brown rice has fiber. It has rice in general is fairly high carb food. But if you eat it with the fiber, it slows down the absorption of the, of the sugars. So I was watching YouTube one time, and this white lady was washing, or she was cooking rice. And this, the video was of this Asian guy watching her cook the rice, and he's just yelling at her all the time. And, and because, I don't know, like white people, they don't rinse their rice. They just pour water in it. And it's like, no, you're supposed to wash your rice. So we're going to wash our rice. This is brown rice. And I wash it usually three or four times until it's clear or fairly clear. And, and you just, you can see even the brown rice. Now, white rice has a lot more starch. But brown rice has still, it still has some. So you wash your rice really good. And then you can pour the water off, which we're going to just do over here. Um, okay, then oops, we're supposed to have the rice cooker. That's right. Okay, then if you don't have a rice cooker, like if you don't have a rice cooker, Target, Walmart, they have rice cookers for fairly ch um, cheap price. If you buy it at an Asian store, one of those like authentic Asian rice cookers, they're very expensive. So you don't want to do that. But 
Um, you can cook the rice in a pan too, which we're going to do because people don't really have rice cookers. So basically with the rice uh, ratio to water is about one to two, but uh, if you're cooking white rice, it needs to be just a little bit less because it's, um, it doesn't have the fiber and it doesn't take as long to cook. And then if you follow along with your recipe, I'm not going to, to uh, read all of it, but basically your broth, you cook your rice in the broth. And you don't have to use chicken seasoning. There is Bill's Best chicken seasoning. I know some people might be a little sensitive to um, the McKay's chicken seasoning. So you just put all of your ingredients together in here um, with turmeric. The turmeric gives the rice a nice yellow color. Um, turmeric is a superfood. Uh, it's a it's super uh, anti-inflammatory. In fact, it's one of the, the highest, uh, the best foods for um, inflammation. So you just cook the rice with all of your, your uh, and let it cook together. And then it turns into this. This is already done. And so it looks like this when you get done cooking. And then what we do, because rice is a sort of a dense food, I like to fluff it up. You can just fluff it up and let it be light. And then for the asparagus, um, now you can do the asparagus two ways. You can roast it or you can just uh, like parboil it. Okay. Um, so we, this, is, this asparagus is from our garden. Have you been eating it? Yeah? Okay. So asparagus has amazing, amazing nutritional values. Um, I didn't realize until I was doing um, the research for this cooking school, but asparagus of course has a lot of fiber. It has vitamin A, C, E, and K. It's also, for diabetics, it has chromium, which helps your, your insulin to get into your cells, which I didn't know that. Now, when you prepare asparagus, what I like to do is you just, you just bend it until it breaks, and that's where that hard spot is. If you don't have time, you can just, uh, see, this one has more waste. You can just cut off certain amount of end, and then people have to chew on the wood. So, so you, just, you just cut it like that, and then um, you just cut it into a, and then you can roast this, or you can just parboil it, like I said. And um, then when it's boiled, you cool it off right away. So anything that you want to stay bright green, like peas, broccoli, asparagus, you want to just parboil it until it's very uh, bright, but yet still soft. And when you do that, can I have the asparagus in the bag that's uh, been, yeah, no, 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 that, that's, those are the stems. Um, I thought it was over here, but anyway. Okay, let me, um, it's, in a, it's in a Ziploc bag, sorry. Okay, so while we're talking about that, I'm gonna keep on telling you about the asparagus. It also is a detoxifying um, compound that helps break down the carcinogens and, and uh, free radicals, which is good for what? Cancer, yeah, so it's really good for cancer. And also, uh, because it takes care of free radicals, free radicals will destroy your cells. And that's why you get like your, cell, you de you, you, your cells get depleted. And that's why you get wrinkles and stuff. So you eat lots of foods that have uh, antioxidants and isoflavin and um, things that will destroy free radicals. Then you can be like 90 years old like me and have very little wrinkles. No, but I am 62. So... Um, 
Okay, it also has uh, what, what they call folate, which work vitamin B12 to help your, your brain function. So it increases your, your, the, your cognitive. Um... Okay, so it, I don't know if you've ever eaten asparagus and you go to the bathroom, your pee smells funny. It, asparagus has a compound that makes it smell funny, but it's not bad for you at all. It, in fact, what's making it smell is what's going to keep you young. So don't worry about it. Okay, so after your, your asparagus is steamed to your, your rice, and just stir it in, and you have your lemon spring asparagus rice. And this is really good. It's really, really tasty. You guys will have it for lunch. All right. Okay, Jeff, you can take this away. Next, we're going to uh, do the curry. Now, um, have you guys been enjoying the beans at the, at the meals? Beans are king of fibers. Beans will, uh, beans act like rooms in your intestines. So your intestines are full of crevices and, and, and like corners and, and the food, if you eat a lot of processed foods, uh, they're just, they turn into sort of glue in your digestive system. And they get caught in all those little crevices and, and corners and, and things like that. And they sit there and they rot. Now, Dr. McDougall says that 80% of the diseases that happen, happen because of all that rotting food that's causing bacteria and viruses in your system. And so you want to eat lots of fiber if you're a diabetic, if you have heart disease, if you have cancer, you want lots of fiber. And so beans are a king of fiber, and they kind of like sweep all those little, little crooks and nannies and, and corners and, and keep it clean. So you want lots of that. Okay, um, I need the chickpea, um, the curry, and I'll take the uh, Instapot, okay? So here. So what we do with our beans, all of our beans, is we soak them on the weekends and we soak them overnight. Um, we rinse the water during the day as they're, as they're soaking, and then we rinse them really good, and then we put them in Ziploc bags and we freeze them. Now what that does, or seems to do, is it gets rid of gas. I know some people, well, quite a few people won't eat beans because it makes them have gas. And, you know, and sometimes at really uh, inopportune times. And so uh, if you freeze it and then you rinse it really good before you use it again, then, then it works pretty good. So what you want to do, how many of you have heard of Instapots? Yeah? Okay, Instapots. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to use them, but it's one of the best things to cook, like beans, uh, even like potatoes. And I don't cook my potatoes. It gets too mushy in there. Um, but, okay, and then I need four cups of water or just a white bowl of water. And so what, it's very easy to cook the beans in the Instant Pot. You just put your water and your, your beans in there and... Now, you have to set your Instapots on different uh, timing for different beans. Garbanzos are kind of a, a soft bean, so that it only takes about maybe uh, 12 to 15 minutes to, for them to get soft. Now, if you're going to do like black beans or red beans, those are harder beans. These take like 25 minutes, maybe and kidney beans will sometimes take up to uh, 45 minutes. Okay. Now, you can beans in here, but you're going to be dealing with gas. Now, when I cook the beans, uh, I learned this in Hungary. When I was in Hungary, they, 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 to they told me that if you cook the beans in the crock pot or in the pot, you just cut an onion in half and you put this side, the whole thing. You don't peel that off. You just put that in there and then you put your garlic in there. And depending on what beans they are, I usually put like oregano or fresh thyme, um, thyme 
really good. Okay, so you put your garlic in there, and then where's the lid? Oh, okay. So you just set this, um, you just put it on, and set it for beans. And this is 22 minutes, so we want to set this down to 12 minutes, and it'll just start by itself. So um, now it takes time for the pressure to build up. So it doesn't take 12 minutes. It'll take more like 25 or 40, I mean 25 to 30 minutes because it takes time to build the pressure up. Once the pressure is built up, then your timer starts. So the curry part, we're going to, um, okay, this rice I'm going to put in here because I'm going to cook my curry in here. Okay. So now we're going to pretend that, here, can you empty that? Um, we're going to pretend that we have the, the curry, the, the beans done, which we do have it done. Did Kimberly go get the, okay, okay. So while we're waiting for that, we're gonna make our curry part. I like to, I like to put um, curry in, in, or, or I like to mix all my seasoning together in one uh, place, just so that it, it, I find that it, it distributes more evenly. You don't have like clumps of salt or garlic or whatever. So I like to put all my seasonings together. And then I like to put it in the water then. Okay, so we use, you can open this, put the can over there. Um, okay, so I understand that there's some of you who can't have the oil, so we won't put the oil in, um, but we will use this. So I like to just mix all my seasonings together. I do this for everything, especially if you're going to be cooking tofu, which will talk about later. So this is mixed in all nicely. And then we can put it in the pan. Um, and we're going to cook it in just a little bit of, let me have a little bit of water in there, in some coconut oil. So um, now if you don't like the if you don't like the, the masala, you don't, well, you don't have to use it, but that's what gives it that curry flavor. How many of you don't like it, the curry? No? Okay, then I'm going to put some in. Sometimes people don't like the curry. Okay, so we'll just put a little bit in. Oh, we need to put all of the thing in. Okay. And then we'll just add it in here and okay so we want to sort of bring it we want it to be a little bit thick okay once that starts cooking up nice then we're going to add some coconut milk we won't add all of it okay we will we're gonna add, we're gonna, we're gonna make more. This is just one recipe, but the, there's enough coconut milk here for like four recipes, which is what we need for for our lunch today. Okay, and then we'll use some organic diced tomatoes. So everything that we use for your in our lifestyle kitchen for our thera therapeutic diet, we use organic or uh, from our garden, which is organic also, but like really fresh organic. So um, my mother was a missionary in India for like 12 years. And so she makes really good curry. And this, I learned to make curry from her. And this is how she does it. She makes her sauce, and then she adds in the potatoes, garbanzo beans, cauliflower, peas, whatever. So since our theme is spring, once this gets boiling and it thickens up, then I'll add some fresh spring peas. Um, if you get it from your garden, just blanch it. 
But if you get it frozen, just thaw it. Don't cook it. And then you add the fresh green peas at the last minute before you serve, and it's bright green. Um, and, and it's really pretty, and it's really tasty. Now, one thing about peas that I want to tell you, people, sometimes people say it's, it's a carb, and it is. But it's a low carb, and also it's low glycemic index. So even if you have diabetes, you can use it because peas like beans. Um, Chelsea, I need that here. Um, cheese or peas like beans are high fiber. And what high fiber does for your blood sugar is that it, you know, when you eat, like most people when they eat breakfast, uh, they eat coffee and donuts or pastry or something like that, right? Anything that you eat processed foods, it makes your blood spike. And then once it spikes, it crashes. So if you're diabetic and you experience like really high sugar and then a crash and you're really tired or you're grumpy or something, um, beans and peas and legumes, it makes your blood sugar go like this. It doesn't spike up and down like this. It just goes gradually up and gradually down. And so even if peas have some sugar, it's okay to eat in moderation for, for the diabetics because of the high fiber and things like that. Peas also are like, um, they also have anti-inflammatory uh, properties and they are, uh, they, ha they have these, um, I forget what it's called now. It's enzymes that are found in green teas that help to, uh, get rid of free radicals. And so the peas really are good for you. Okay, so this is boiling and where's the, 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 the beans that are already cooked? Okay, so you can take this, you can put that there and take that. Okay, so these are the chickpeas that are already cooked for you in the crock pot and we'll add this to it and um, we'll add some more um, and then we'll add the peas at the very last. And it's delicious. So this with the rice together is really good. Okay. You can take this. Okay. And, and you can take this. And let's see. What else? Oh, this is the fun part now. Uh, how many of you like, how many of you know what P.F. Chang is? It's a restaurant. It's a, it's a Chinese restaurant. It's not Chinese. It's Americanized Chinese. Oh, this guy just gave thumbs up. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's not real Chinese. <laughs> it's it's uh, kind of Americanized Chinese, but still they have this this lettuce wrap. It's really good. It's um, and they have the vegetarian lettuce wrap, which is made with tofu. Now we made our own version, which is I like better than than the, the P.F. Chang's because um, I don't like their tofu. It's kind of rubbery. It's kind of like eating rubber. But anyway, so um, what you want to do is I'll take the, the tofu. Uh, yeah, that. No, no, no. The, the tray. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ju it, it's just a matter of getting all your ingredients together. And like so you, you can use regular onions if you want. Or some people like red onions. But I really like these green onions because it gives it a pop of color. And so what you want to do is you want to make a marinade. And when you make a marinade, um, it's basically the same ingredient. Okay, so we're going to set this aside. And then uh, let me have the finished tofu and the tofu, the regular tofu. Okay. Okay, so what one thing, the, the thing that, that people talk about soybeans and to soybean products, which is uh, people give soybeans a rad, bad rap because when they started making soy milk and the soy milk started getting very, very popular, the milk industry hired scientists to find that soybeans have estrogen. They found that soybeans have estrogen. Now, what they don't tell you is that the plant estrogen and animal estrogen are two complete different things. And... And in 2020, there was a study done in China where they, they looked specifically at 
soy products, and two types of cancer, breast cancer and prostate, prostate cancer. And what they found was that if you use soybeans, uh, if you use soybeans moderately, it really doesn't affect anything too much. But if you use soybeans in a higher quantity, it has beneficial preventive effects on breast cancer and prostate cancer. Dr. Keith has a lecture on uh, soy um, estrogen, plant estrogen and um, animal estrogen. It's really interesting, but like, yeah, look it up. It, it's amazing. So what we want to do is make the tofu size, you know, just a little quarter inch size kind of thing. And then we want to make our broth, which I think Kimberly already did it for me. So I'm just going to put, I think I need some water. Oh, here's some. No. Okay, yeah. So um, anyway, we're going to marinate this for at least an hour. Okay. And then when it's, because the, the other thing about tofu is that you have to season it. If you don't season it, it doesn't taste like anything and it's terrible. So the secret to good tofu is to season it before you cook it. Then it'll taste like whatever you seasoned it with. So if your seasoning is good, then that'll be good. Okay, so here's some tofu right here. We're going to add some green onions to it. And um, what I really like are water chestnuts. It's really hard to find water chestnuts that are, um, that are whole. So if you get sliced water chestnuts, just cut them in half. If you get whole ones, cut them in quarters because it really adds a crunchy to it. And But I know some people don't like water chestnuts, so I'm not going to make it here. But what I am going to make are those noodles. Um, I cook some, uh, some mung bean noodles. Now, mung beans are not really beans. Uh, but mung beans have the number one enzyme for anti-aging. So, you know, in your salad bar, you have those mung bean sprouts. Eat lots of it. It'll take your wrinkles away. It'll give you energy. It's really, really good. So um, when, when you bake the tofu, and we bake it without oil too, um, it looks like this. So if you want to, you can add, um, add, yeah, here we go. Okay, so you can add water chestnuts to it too. You can add broccoli to it. You can add cauliflower to it. You can add whatever you want. But this is the way we're going to serve it today. And then let me have the tray. Okay, so what we're going to do is mix all this up. Um, you know, these noodles are kind of long. We're going to cut them in half with the lettuce. Okay, and then we're going to there we go. There. Now, I put turmeric in the noodles when I cooked it, so it turns this nice, pretty yellow. I put turmeric in everything that I can get by with. I have three grandkids, and they're always falling and hurting themselves and all kinds of things like that. And so, uh, you know, they've always got a bruise and things like that. And turmeric is really, really good for inflammation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a nice piece of butterhead lettuce. Isn't this beautiful? This is from our garden. And we're just going to put a little bit of our tofu mixture and just a little bit of more greens. And then we, we make a ginger sauce, which we don't have time to do right now. But this is, this is your lettuce tofu wrap. Doesn't it look good? Oh, sorry, guys, on the TV. On YouTube but it's really really tasty so you guys will have this for lunch so um, let's see are there any questions we have uh, we just have what time is it one more minute it's one o'clock now Oh, okay. Well, I guess I guess we'll take the questions offline then. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time.
Okay. Are we off? Oh. Are we off now? <laughs> okay. Oh.